Members and friends are also invited to eat their spuds in Parish Hall while enjoying the Westminster Art Exhibit. We are grateful to the many gifted members who are sharing their works of art with us this morning. And a special thank you to Dale Rogers, who has made this all possible. The complete list of artifacts can be found on the insert in today's bulletin. Fair trade items are also available in the West Narthex this morning. The Adult Education Forum introduces a new two-week course today at 1115 in the second floor classroom as we welcome Dr. Katie Carlson Eastfault, Assistant Professor of English at Lee University, who will present, What is the Christian Imagination? The course will examine Christian imagination through the works of 19th and 20th century voices, culminating with an overview of C.S. Lewis, the subject of our 2021 Bay Weekend, November 13 and 14. This Friday, October 29th at 6 p.m., those who join together to read the Bible in a year, beginning last November 1, 2020, will gather for a celebratory dinner at Finley's Tap House. And those of you that participated, you don't have to have read every day in order to come. Next Sunday, October 31st, we will celebrate Reformation Sunday. In the spirit of the hallowed eve before All Saints Day, adults are invited to join our children in wearing costumes to worship. Harvest Fest will be held in Parish Hall immediately following worship and include a delicious lunch, activities for the children, and the harvest maze will be in the youth room. At this time, Pete Van Giesen, who chairs the Stewardship Campaign Committee, will provide the ministry moment. Good morning and thank you. Um, as we wind down our 2022 Stewardship Campaign, we are grateful for your generous contributions of this congregation of time, money, and friendship. Thank you, Dr. Kiefer, for your leadership, wisdom, and encouragement. And to the Stewardship Committee, Malia, Robin, Tom, Julie, Pat, Bill, Greg, Brenton, and Bob, thank you for your work, your thoughtful and personal reflections from here and in the Friday newsletter. But mostly, to all of you for committing your financial resources to the ministry of this church. Although we are through the formal campaign, we have still not reached our goal. So if you haven't yet filled out your pledge card, please consider completing it either on paper or online at the church website, or call Lisa Runkle or email her at the church office. But please do. And again, thank you for your faithfulness, your commitment to this ministry of the one who calls us friends. Thank you. And thank you, Pete, for your valuable leadership. And now, let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God.
The Spirit is coming to bless us all with a new song. Give gifts for the good of all, poured out on all to teach us a new song. Strangers and neighbors, foreigners and family will join in the new song. Come, let us worship, make a joyful noise. Friends, every worship, we humbly approach the foot of the cross, admitting to God the deep chasm between ourselves and our neighbors, between ourselves and God. Knowing God's unwavering love and mercy, we boldly ask our Savior to reconcile us in our confession. Therefore, let us lift up corporate prayer of confession, followed by our prayer of silent hearts in silence. Let us pray. Merciful God, we are gathered today as one body because you chose to call us your friends. We come from all walks of life, each lacking reverence and humility. We confess we are uncomfortable when others cry out and discourage them from seeking you. Forgive us for settling for religious quick rather than seeing your face. Hear now our silent prayers of confession.
Brothers and sisters in Christ, God so loved the world that God humbly gave the Son for us, not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Friends, believe the good news. Jesus Christ, the peace of Christ be with you. Thanks be to God. Amen. How are you today? It's a little bit rainy outside, isn't it? You do not like rain? You like rain because it brings flowers outside, but you don't like rain because you don't get to play outside. Got it. That definitely makes sense. All right, friends, we are continuing our Bible story from growing in God's love and there wasn't a picture that was really nice so but we're learning about Sarah and how God made Sarah laugh <laughs> that's exactly right right so let me let me ask this one what makes you smile I hope you all are hearing this. Junie just said that Junie Ben, right, makes her smile when he tickles her. <laughs> he went like this. Okay. Junie makes you laugh by tickling you. Uh huh. Yes, Kara. By seeing something that you like. Very good. What else? Oh, when I do the claw. Oh, yeah. If you've seen the movies, you know, when the, there's a claw in the hand and I end up tickling her, that's what she's talking about. Yeah, just like that. Yes. What else? When else the... When? Yeah. And smile. Karen says her job and sometimes funny shows. Now, there's a difference between when you're laughing and when you're smiling, right? When you're laughing, there are times when you laugh so hard that your stomach hurts, doesn't it? Yes. No? It doesn't happen to you? I mean, it hasn't happened in a while. Oh, it doesn't happen. It hasn't happened in a while. Okay, good. So everybody has experienced the laughter where you laugh so hard. You're making like weird noises, like you're like, ah! right? See? Oh, snort. Oh, yeah, exactly. See, there are times when we laugh because we are so happy. And there are times when we laugh because there are certain things that doesn't make sense to us. There are times we laugh because we are really in pain sometimes. Rather than crying, there are times you just kind of chuckle because it hurts so much. Today, Sarah was laughing because God says something that seemed impossible, right? But what did God do that made Sarah laugh? Do you remember? Yes, say. That's right. God said to Sarah, you're going to have a baby. And how old was she? Very old. Very old. Very old. Okay. There are things that we do not understand, but God makes us laugh because everything is possible with God. As long as we are humble enough and we trust in God enough that everything is possible, then you and I are not only laughing, 
but you and I are filled with joy and love. Sadie is teaching me a theological thing, and I need, uh, I'm learning. Thank you, Aaron. You're, you're, you're awesome. I, I am learning. Our children and you all are here with us already and sharing your faith, and I am so thankful for that. And you make me smile this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Juni? Your, be, your dad is being silly sometimes. That's good. That's what I do too. <laughs> Friends, let us come together and let's thank God who gives us joy, laughter, and more, more than anything, all things that are possible. So let us pray. God, as you made Sarah laugh and smile, we thank you for allowing us to laugh and smile. We thank you for each other, and we thank for you for being our God and bringing so much joy and so much blessing in our lives. So as we continue to praise you and honor you, be with us. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all rise and sing our responsive praise in joy. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love is strong and it never ends. God welcomes all strangers and friends. God's love strong and it never ends. Our first reading is from Job chapter 42, verses 1 through 6. This is the fourth Sunday our lectionary readings are from the book of Job. We have journeyed with Job through horrific loss, misguided comfort from friends, theological debate, grandstanding, and a life-changing encounter with Yahweh. Job's struggle is brought to resolution in today's reading. His journey of persistence, which began with integrity, moved through lament and reverence, culminates in humility. Following Job's encounter with Yahweh, he is a transformed person, able to forgive and to pray for the friends who saw his suffering as God's punishment. Job's persistence has transformed the community to which he belongs into one of affirmation rather than blame. The commentaries make an observation about verb mas in verse 6. Although the NRSV Bible translates it as I despise myself, many agree a more accurate interpretation would be I yield myself in the presence of Yahweh. Self-loathing does not fit the context. Commentaries also reminds us that repent does not only refer to being sorry for one's sin, but, having, but has a wide range of meaning, including to regret, to change, and to have compassion. Job's cause in the presence of God leads to an embrace of his humani humanity and of persisting in humility. Hear now the word of God. 
Then Job answered the Lord, I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Who is this that hides counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I did not know. So I hear and I will speak. I will question you and you declare to me. I had heard of you by hearing of the ear, but now my eyes sees you. Therefore, I yield myself and repent in dust and ashes. Amen. As we continue the sermon series on persistence, our second reading is Mark 10, verses 46 to 52. Today we are introduced to Bartimaeus, a man who, like Job, persisted in crying out even when others wanted to silence him. Bartimaeus' encounter with Christ was life-changing not only for him, but also for those within his community. Hear now God's holy word. They came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho. Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet, but he cried out even more loudly, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart. Get up. He is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, What? do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to Jesus, my teacher, let me see again. Jesus said to him, go, your faith has made you well. Immediately he regained his sight and follow Jesus on the way. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The title of the sermon, Persisting in Humility. The text, Therefore I have uttered what I did not understand, things too wonderful for me, which I do not know. Let us pray. Loving and merciful God, give us the humility that comes from being in your holy presence. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, if you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. 
If you can wait and not be tired by waiting or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. With these words, Rudyard Kipling begins his beloved poem, If. Written in 1895 as sage advice to his son, John. As a young single woman persisting in a call to ministry amidst cries of doubt, criticism, and blame, I found strength reflecting upon this poem with my therapist who was also an Episcopal priest on my journey pursuing a doctorate degree in pastoral counseling. Years later, when Peter and I welcomed Paul into the world, we chose the poem If to frame and hang in Paul's bedroom, greeting him each morning growing up. And I brought the frame here if any of you want to look at it after church. One lazy Monday morning during the summer following Paul's junior year in high school, I offered him $100 if he memorized the poem, If, before I did. I went blithely to work, rather proud of myself, thinking that would keep him occupied for at least a week and a good challenge for me as well. By noon the same day, Paul called me at church to recite the poem. <laughs> he received his $100 by dinner, and Peter and I later had a conversation about my parenting initiatives. <laughs> there is something within the character of Job and Bartimaeus that resonates with Kipling's poem, If. Both are resolute and persistent with voices that cry out even when others seek to blame them and quiet them. The voices of others cannot mute their cry to be acknowledged by their creator and savior in the midst of suffering. Both are rewarded for their persistence and their refusal to be silent with eyes that see God. How delightful to meet Bartimaeus in today's gospel reading, whose name means son of honor. What a comfort to discover in his story parallels with our friend Job. Bartimaeus refuses to be defined by his circumstances, by the prejudice that associated his blindness with sin, or by the expectations of those who are able to see, who appear to be close to Jesus, and who even presume the right to speak on Jesus' behalf. Rather than trusting others, Bartimaeus trusts himself and persists until his call is heard by Christ. According to Dr. Lincoln Galloway, professor of homiletics at the Claremont School of Theology, the persistence of Bartimaeus sets in motion a wave of mercy, blessing, and change. Bartimaeus calls out to Jesus for mercy. Jesus calls for Bartimaeus. 
those around Jesus call Bartimaeus to Jesus, the breakthrough of mercy begins with the recognition that those who once enjoined Bartimaeus to be silent, not to bother Jesus of Nazareth, are now transformed. They are no longer speaking sternly to him. Indeed, their excitement is palpable. Take heart. Cheer up. Get up on your feet. Jesus is calling you. They have become witnesses to and vessels of mercy. The story of mercy put into motion by the persistence of one person's refusal to accept the status quo of those who presume to speak on behalf of God, we also see in Job's story. In the midst of his struggle, Job holds fast to God and clings to his dignity as a human being. Because of Job's persistence, God enters into a dialogue with Job which affirms who God is and reminds Job of who he is. Job is transformed in the presence of God with wonder, awe, and gratitude. Job proclaims, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Previously, Job knew God by what he heard about God from his family and faith community. Now Job meets God in his own life, in the thick of the storm that is his life. Because of Job's willingness to persist in integrity, lament, and reverence, Job finds himself face to face with his loving creator, in this culminating encounter, Job yields himself and finds comfort in the dust and ashes of his humanity, once again persisting, this time in humility. The Latin word for humility is very close to the Latin word for humanity and means to be grounded, created from the dust and ashes. Humility affirms one's intrinsic self-worth as a child of God formed from the clay of the earth by the potter into a human being. Humility accepts and embraces the limitations that are a part of being human. I have uttered what I did not understand. Therefore, I yield myself and repent in dust and ashes. When Job gets up from his ash heap of loss and sorrow to get on with his life, his deepened experience of God summons him to new ways of seeing, leads him outside of himself and creates of him a new being in the midst of his community a community which no longer judges him or tells him to be quiet, but a community that eats bread with him, shows him sympathy and comfort, and takes an offering on his behalf. 
it seems that not only Job is transformed, the community is also changed by what they learned about God because of Job's persistence. As we celebrate stewardship dedication, we are grateful for the generations who have come before us and who, like Job and Bartimaeus, persisted in seeing God. Because of their faith and tenacity, we are a part of a congregation that remains steadfast and grateful to the God who meets us in our lives, who calls us friends, and who invites us to reach beyond ourselves. As we continue on the way, may we follow Kipling's advice, trusting ourselves when others doubt us, choosing love when others hate us, and yet neither looking too good nor talking too wise. May each of us Persist in integrity, lament, reverence, humility, and so be transformed by the mercy we have received at the hand of God. So be it. Amen.
Please let us rise and affirm our faith together. In life and in death, we belong to God. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life, who inspired the prophets and apostles, rules our faith and life in Christ through scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily tasks and to live holy and joyful lives. Amen. As we turn to the church at prayer, we remember those members with special concerns and joys. Hospitalized this week is Karen Kraft at Memorial. New arrival, the red rose on the communion table celebrates the birth of Max Henry Pinkerton, born on September 20th to Maggie and Jason Pinkerton. His proud grandparents are Julie at and Matt Pinkerton, and great-grandparents are Jan and Jim Pinkerton. The other red rose on the communion table celebrates the birth of Karis Willa Germerod, born on October 19th to Colleen and Scott Germerod. Karis is the sister of Thaclin, Marin, Verity, and Isla. Her proud grandparents are Kathy and Randy Germerod, and her aunt and uncles are Carrie and Nick Walden. The prayers and sympathy of the congregation are extended to Chris and Butch Elsie on the death of Chris's father, to Megan and Meredith Elsie on the death of their grand grandfather, Edward Calcutra, on Friday, October 15th, in St. Louis, Missouri. The prayers and sympathy of the congregation are also extended to Stephanie and Bennett Bass on the death of Bennett's mother, to Claire Bass on the death of her grandmother, Marilyn Bass, on Wednesday, October 6th, in Paris, Illinois. Milestone birthday and anniversary we celebrate today are Marjorie Dodds, who celebrates 90 years on October 28th, and the flowers in the chancel are given in loving, mem loving memory of Dr. Glenn Pittman by his family. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, who is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, we are grateful for our lives that are renewed each day in Jesus Christ. Through your Spirit, we are empowered and boldly lift our cares and concerns to you, knowing that you hear 
our gentlest whispers to the cries of our hearts. We thank you for our lives and relationships we have with all those who are around us this morning as we celebrate Dedication Sunday. May our gifts and commitments be a reflection of our lives and as we ask our offerings to be multiplied and to be used to reach the ends of the earth to bring blessings on those who are in need of your love, may our lives dwell where you call us to shine your glory. Alpha and Omega, we humbly ask you to remember the people whom we lift up in our prayers today. Prayers and names that are said and also are hidden in our hearts. We pray for those who are making a new start and for those nearing a journey's end in life. We join with those who are in celebration as well as those who are in mourning in prayer. We pray for those who are at the crossroads as well as those who are persisting trials and tribulations of life in humility. We pray for those who might have been neglected, who feel isolated, or even perhaps forgotten by the world. For everyone under, everyone in the world and in your cre creation is under your careful, loving eyes. Although the colors of the leaves and the seasons may change, your steadfast love for us never wavers. May we stand on our firm cornerstone that we will never be shaken and to be able to do the work of ministry with joy and thanksgiving that will cause us to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with you with each step that we take. As the world brings more challenges into our lives every day, we ask that may we be able to persist in humility, knowing that our mighty creator is with us and empowering us to bring hope, love, and joy into the world in Christ's name. Therefore, we praise you and pray the prayer that Christ taught us in confidence, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are so thankful for your hospitality and partnership in ministry, knowing that Westminster believes that we are in the world for ministry. At this time, let us come together and offer our lives and our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Can we join together in prayer? Holy God, with faith and hope, we offer these gifts to you, humbly asking you to bless them and use them for our kins and your kingdom to accomplish your purpose in Jesus Christ. Amen. calling me to love but giving me the choice to choose between a life unknown where you will lead the way or follow earthly trends that will surely pass away Lord you know I love you so what is your plan in the silence of
22 pledges are presented in the baptismal font brass bowl as a symbol of our faithfulness to this covenant community. Gracious God, as friends of Christ and stewards of your mysteries, let us give generously and with humility. Thank you for the joy of friendship and the privilege of belonging to this faith community. Thank you for the gift of children and the privilege of 
Thank you for the richness of our journey together. Help us remember that our church family is made resilient when we grow in stewardship. Holy and loving God, may each offering of gratitude open the doors of Westminster to become a way to serve friends beyond our faith community. And now let us go forth persisting in humility. Have courage, hold on to what is right. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor everyone. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gentle strength of God's Holy Spirit bless us and keep us, amen.